Welcome to LIFM, and this is my SIG River Cutthroat EDH deck. This is the third EDH deck I built, and it's probably the most resilient out of all my EDH decks. It's really stable in multiplayer games, and it's pretty solid in 1 and 1 as well. So, just like SIG's ability, this deck does draw a decent amount of cards sometimes. He's also a, a pretty reasonably uh, costed commander. 2 mana for a 1-3 and it's hybrid mana. So whether you have blue or black you can cast him. And what he does is at end of turn if an opponent lost 3 or more lives you may draw a card. And damage counts as life loss. So the deck runs 36 lands. It runs 11 basic swamps. Now a lot of these swamps are just lands that I had laying around from when I uh, stopped playing Magic the first time. So a lot of unhinged lands in here, including a foil one that I cracked. Who'd have thought it'd be worth this much now? It runs 13 basic islands. Two are from uh, unhinged, but the rest are from Zendikar. I really like the art on this one. And it runs 12 non basic lands. Teleria West, which is normally being transmuted to get me Reliquary Tower if I'm drawing a lot of cards. Or Strip Mine if I absolutely need it. Bajuku Bog on occasion as well. And sometimes Creep and Tar Pit. But mostly Reliquary Tower. Creep and Tar Pit. It adds both my colors. And it also becomes a 3 2 unblockable creature for 3 mana. Pretty good late game. Tainted Isle adds both my colors. Demir Aqueduct adds both my colors at the same time. Halmar Depths. It's good to see what's what you have coming next, the next three cards. Strip Mine. Self explanatory. John Catacomb add both my colors. Bajuka Bog for graveyard hate. Sometimes my own Grey Thread, if I'm facing like a Mana Plasm deck or something. Watery Grave, it's another card I had laying around that I wanted to use. So it just worked out really well, building this deck. I cracked this one when I used to play Magic a lot before. Before I stopped playing. Underground River, I like the art on the newer cards better, but I had this laying around, so I didn't really see a reason to buy one of those. So I'm just using what I had. Reliquary Tower because the deck does draw a lot of cards from time to time. And Polluted Delta is another card that I had laying around. I had a playset from before. Never thought it'd be worth as much as it is now. I think it's at $60 right now. Anyways, this normally gets Watery Grave and Bar in that a basic island or, or swamp. The deck runs 13 instances. So Mystical Tutor to get whatever you need, whether it's Damnation or something like that. Whatever you need at the time. Brainstorm helps you to tuck cards away if you need to. Telling Time, I actually like this card a lot in this deck. Instead of drawing three like with Brainstorm, you look at the top three, you put one in your hand, one on top of your deck, and one at the bottom. But for two mana, instant speed, it's a pretty solid card. Tribute to Hunger is really good against those Voltron style decks where they put all these equipments or auras on their commander. You can make them sack that and gain a lot of life. Recall is one of my favorite cards when I started playing Magic, and this deck was the perfect reason to play it again. It's 3 mana, return a permanent to its owner's hand, and then they discard a card. Late game, if someone has no cards in hand, Recall basically reads destroy target permanent. Undermine is one of, I think, four counter spells in this deck, minus the creature. And all the counters in this deck do something else. So I'm not just running counter spells that just counter spell. All of them do something. This one counters a spell, and the spell's control loses three life. I've actually won by doing that before, so. Not the best counter, but I, I like the card. 
Eye Blight's ending it destroys a non elf creature. And you'd be surprised how many creatures, how many players don't play any elves. So it normally really just destroys any creature. And murder really destroys any creature. Clutch of the Understudy, kind of like Recoil, is a lot of value in one card. You can bounce a permanent just like Recoil, but instead of them discarding a card, they get, they lose 3 life. I've also won with this card before too. And worst case scenario, you pay 3 mana and you transmute it for the next card coming up. Cryptic Command or Damnation or something like that. So really good card. I like the card. Cryptic Command is the second counter spell in my deck. And it's probably one of the best counter spells in EDH. It gives you a lot of options. And you can transmute for it. Desertion, the third counter spell in the deck. And it counters the spell, but if it's an artifact or a creature, you can put it into play under your control. It's five mana, but it's a really good card. Evacuation, really good against token armies or just blowing someone out end of their turn. So they they have to start all over. And Spelljack is the last nine creature counter in the deck. Kind of like the Sertion, it's a really fun card. You normally get the spell that you countered. It's six mana, but this is EDH, and we're playing this for fun. I only run nine sorceries in this deck, and a few of them are reanimation type sorceries. So obviously, the original, reanimate. Demonic Tutor, to get whatever I need. Damnation, for if you need to reset the board. This is another card that I had later on. And no, it's a $30 card, so I'm probably not going to be buying any more anytime soon. Washout's another one of my favorite cards from uh, Invasion. And this is another card that I was very happy to be able to play in this deck because it's just been laying around. And it's a really good card. I find a lot of people play green and white in my playgroup especially. And this just blows them out because neither of those colors are in your deck or, or this deck. Rise from the Grave reanimates a creature from your graveyard or an opponent's graveyard for 5 mana. Beacon of Unrest does the same thing with the added benefit of being able to reanimate an artifact as, instead and shuffling the beacon back into your deck. Life's Finale is another board wipe, but then you can search one of your opponent's li uh, library for up to 3 creatures and put them to their graveyard for you to reanimate later if you feel like it. Decree of Pain is another board wipe, but you can draw a card for each creature you destroy. However, I normally end up cycling Decree at instant speed, you know, to kill a lot of tokens or whatever and draw a card. And Exsanguinate. This is just a really, really stupid card in multiplayer. You can gain a ridiculous amount of life. In a four player game, even if you do it for five, you're gaining 20 life. Just a stupid card. I run seven non creature artifacts in the deck. Tormod's Crypt, obviously for graveyard hate. I might replace this with Relic of Progenitus. I'm not sure yet. Soul Ring, self explanatory. This is one of only two decks that I run Soul Ring in. It's not a card that I think is essential in every EDH deck. I, I just don't think that way about this card. Library of Lang, like Reliquary Tower, is here for redundancy. It's another card that makes sure I don't have to discard at the end of my turn if I have too many cards in my hand. Greaves is self-explanatory. Darksteel Ingot is self-explanatory as well. Conjurer's Closet works pretty good in this deck because I run a lot of creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects. So this works really well with them. Vencer's Journal, like Library of Lang and Reliquary Tower. Again, Redundancy. Another card that makes sure I have no maximum hand size. With the added bonus that I, I can gain a life for each card in my hand on my upkeep. It costs 5, but I think it's worth it in this deck. I run 8 enchantments in this deck, so animate dead.
there's probably too many words. If you don't know what it is, uh, check it up on Star City or somewhere like that. Or Gatherer. Bitter Blossom. It's a good early game. Gives me some blockers at one life. Phyrexian Arena is one of the ways I draw extra cards. Ristic Study is another way I draw extra cards. Web of Inertia is a way of me stopping my opponents from attacking me. Because I do run a few cards that remove graveyards from the game. So I can make it so someone can't attack me by removing their graveyard. It's a card that you don't see get played very often. I think a lot of people don't even know it exists. It's from Judgment. Vile Consumption. All creatures have at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature unless you pay one life. It's a good it's good against those people that like put in forty tokens into play with Stormhurt or something retarded like that. Leyline of Anticipation, you can play spells as instant. None land spells, obviously. Honden of Seen Winds is another way I draw extra cards in this deck. Baleful Strix. This was not a $15 card when I got uh, the deck. The Plain Chase deck, but it's gone up in value since it's seen some play in, in Legacy. Phantasmal Image. It's a clone. Mind Shrieker. For those who watched the Braids videos I put up, I mentioned that this guy's an all-star in my blue-black deck. And as you guys saw in the videos, he, he really performed there too. Even in the game that he was working against me, he performed really well. Nizumi Grave Robber. Graveyard Hate and Reanimation in one. Withered Wretch, Graveyard Hate. Uh, the deck runs 26 creatures, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that when I started going through the creatures. Demir Cut Purse. It's just another creature that adds a lot of value for his casting costs. He has no evasion, but in multiplayer he can usually find someone who can't block him. And if he does damage to a player, they discard a card and you draw a card. Demir Doppelganger is a creature hate in graveyards, and it also clones them. And regains the ability to do it again. Shadow Mage Infiltrator has evasion, and when he does damage, you draw a card. Simulacrum is self explanatory. Clone is self explanatory. Evil Twin is another clone, but in this deck, he's just a better clone. He does what clone does with the option of destroying the creature he copied at some point. Phyrex and Metamorph, as well, is just a better clone, because he can clone artifacts. Sakashima Student, again, is just a better clone in this deck, because you can ninjutsu in him for 2 mana. Or you can just cast him as a regular clone for 4. Venser, while not a counterspell per se, does have the ability to, to delay someone a turn, or bounce a permanent. Teferi... Self-explanatory, I can ca cast my creatures as instants, and other people can cast spells as instants, only as sorceries. Puppeteer Clique reanimates opponent's creatures for a turn, then exiles them. So it's reanimation and graveyard hate in one. Blood Gift Demon is another way I draw extra cards in this deck. Same with Harvester of Souls. Grave Titan is just a really solid card with another end to the battlefield effect. Frost Titan, same thing. Consecrated Sphinx, another way I draw extra cards. Drain and Welk is my other creature that counters spells. Duplicant, creature removal. Chance of the Spires is just a really fun card to play. You get to use your opponent's spells for free when he comes into play. Shieldred, reanimates my creatures. Forces my opponents to sack their creatures. And Ruins Card Demon tutors when he comes into play. Thanks for watching the video, guys.